Life with Liliana and Friends. Welcome to this evening's episode of Life with Liliana and Friends. I'm so thankful you could join us this evening. And as you know, we've been having some really interesting conversations. This week we also had our very first Twitter space, which was it went better than expected. So keep a lookout for the next one. We'll be showing putting that up on the page soon. But today I am really excited to introduce you to my favorite son, Gideon Alipate Chimi Tora. Welcome, Gideon. Hello. Thank you for having me. Uh, isn't he just the cutest? So he wasn't actually part of the whole plan, um, but he's been listening in and we've been conversing a lot about the discussions. And so he said to me, Mom, listen, if, there's, if you think that there's anything that I can um, say on the show, then I'd love to come on. So we thought that we'd talk to him and look at the perspective from a 12 year old, so he's 12 years old now. Some of you may recall that Edwin talked about them first meeting. So Edwin and I first uh, started seeing each other when Gideon was only about four months old. Um, so his perspective is going to be quite different from his older sister's, uh, from Melania's perspective. So Gideon, are you ready, son? Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're on the show. So I want to start off like this. Um, how do you, when did you know that Pa wasn't your biological dad? Uh, well, I really didn't know. I just knew that he was with my mom, so I was like, oh, this guy must be my real dad. I didn't even think You didn't of, think about it, eh? No, I didn't even think of whether he looked different from me or like whether he had a different last name. I probably didn't even know his real name, so. Because when you're with your dads, you just know like this is dad or this is this is pa. That's so interesting. And because I can tell you when you were younger, a lot of people used to be like, oh, there's like this young Christian child um, with this um, Indian man. But I, let me tell you, because I remember when you first found out, and this is for the viewers too, this is a little uh, backstory, but Gideon was about three or four when he found a picture of me and his biological dad and he became so upset, so angry with me um, and said, why are you pictured here with Momo and what about my pa? And so we had to explain to him then and he was okay with the explanation or he calmed down when we explained to him that he has two dads because he's so special. So he needs two dads to handle him. So let's talk about your two dads. We want to hear the down low on your two dads. Yeah? Hopefully they're not watching so they won't hear. So what is it like with your two dads? What is that relationship like between you and each of them or the three of you together? Can you help us understand that? You know, the relationship between the three of us is like, it's a good relationship because there's no tension between like uh, Momo and Pa, there's no tension and they just have like a mutual respect for each other yes. and just like me knowing that they are good with each other, it makes me feel better so it's like there's a nice, there's a nice relationship. Right. You know you raise a really good point for us parents that it's important for us to have a good relationship with each other because the children are noticing. I didn't even realize that was a thing. Can you recall any time when you felt like that relationship was a bit difficult or an awkward feeling? You know, most of the time it's good, but uh, I vividly remember this memory when I went to the village with Momo and I was with him and I felt this little like feeling of betrayal wow. because it's like I'm here with Momo but my pa's at home like wondering what I'm doing right now. Right. while I'm away for it. So yeah, there's just a little feeling of betrayal. Yes. And did that last long? Like how did you come out of that feeling? Do you always have that feeling with your momo? Uh, well, I don't anymore because uh, Pa is okay with it now. So just me knowing that Pa is okay with it, it's like... Yes. A reassuring thing. And that's good. That's another great example of how us parents can help um, you guys be comfortable with that relationship. Eh? So I want to just touch on, ask you some questions about your village. Let's have a chat about that because Pa mentioned that um, he had to 
understand why it was important for you guys to go back to your village. Um, because us as Itoke, um, that's where, how we identify ourselves. So, well, first of all, where is your village? Tell us. My village is in is not house. It's in Sabeto, in right. Andi, so. Yes, and so that's easy to get to, eh? Not yeah. like mom's village. It's not to too far. You don't have to go by boat. Yes, yes. But wait till you get to mom's village. <laughs> so, what is one of the favorite, one of your favorite memories of being in the village? Well, I went. Uh, I went hiking up the Sleeping Giant with two of my cousins and like we got up there and the view was just awesome and they were, I think we went early in the morning so the sun was like just rising wow. in the and it was awesome. Wow, it's beautiful. You're really blessed to have the Sleeping Giant right <laughs> yeah. you know, where your village is. And what is, what is, when you go to the village, what is one of the worst things? Oh, one of the worst things is just sitting down and all the momos are gathered around the tano and then drinking grog and you just have to sit down even though you serve no purpose. <laughs> so yeah, that's one thing I really... Not fun. Yes. Not fun. So you know, I was thinking, like you haven't grown up in your village, um, you don't go as often as we'd like, um, you don't speak the dialect, but when you go there, do you feel out of place? No, 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 no. One thing with my village is when I go there, they really embrace me no matter what, like no matter the language I speak or whether, oh, he's a city boy, so he might know not know this. It's like my village really embraces me for who I am. Yes, yes. It's a, would you go as far to say as you feel like you're at home? Not, not like I'm at home because there has to be like, you know, like not as comfortable as I'm at home, but I'm quite comfortable. Okay, so for example, what wouldn't you do there? Like at home usually, I just like, you know, lie down, I'm sloppy everywhere, <laughs> and like I just do nothing. But in the village, I usually like walk around, you know, just check on the apartments. Yes. Like and I suppose things like just taking off your t-shirt and yeah, walking around and the just place. Around, yeah, walking around, kind of but I, I suppose that's part of the culture, you know, the traditional um, things that we need to respect because you wouldn't be walking around um, Natunyara with your shirt off. For sure. Exposed. Yeah. Not good. <laughs> now another thing I would like to touch on um, is discipline. So if you recall the Twitter space also, there was quite a bit of discussion about discipline. Eh? And it's nowadays you're not even allowed to discipline like physically I suppose corporal punishment is not allowed in schools. Um, and Pai and I talked a bit about how we discipline you and your sister. I wanted to ask um, whether you think that discipline is necessary for children and why or why not? I think discipline is very necessary for children because if you don't discipline a child, then your child will never like, be able to differentiate between right and wrong. Oh, and the, your child wouldn't know any boundaries. So yeah, disciplining yes. is definitely a real necessity for a child, someone's child. Yes, yes, that's good. Now, when talking about disciplining you, um, I have to be honest. Disciplining Gideon was more of a <coughs> tricky thing compared to Melania. So, what do you think the best way to discipline you is? Well, for me, it was taking away something I value. Like I notice now, you guys, you take away uh, like my game time on like the PS4 or like my sleepovers or like you can go to a birthday. And I think that's like more effective than using physical force. Because before, yes. when I used to get smacked, it was like I carried this little bit of hatred with me right. that would like continue the loop of just like doing that same wrong thing again just to just to annoy you or just to annoy my parents. Wow. That's interesting. So what you're saying is when you used to get like the smack or wooden spoon, it actually left you with this feeling of resentment. And I actually remember you you being really, really angry at times and which is outside of your nature because you're quite a happy, easygoing person. So let me ask you, in those moments when you used to get really angry, because I remember you used to get really, really angry sometimes, how did you calm yourself down? 
Uh, one thing is just to go to my room. I used to do this really weird thing where I used to scream in my pillow. Just to let all my anger out. Yes. And just to like keep calm. So yeah, that's how I used to deal with my anger most of the time. Yes, I remember you giving me that piece of advice. Yes. You say, Mom, when you're angry, you can just go into your room and scream into your pillow and it'll be okay. It really works. Yes, it does. It does. Okay, son, I just have one more thing to ask you. You're doing so well and you've shared so many interesting thoughts. So now in your wise mature age of 12 going on 13 I'm sure you've learned some lessons you've learned some things I was hoping you could maybe share one or two things for other children who are you know around your age maybe in a blended family or just navigating life what are some lessons that you've learned that you'd like to offload to them uh, definitely some advice is just to keep an open mind you know, keeping an open mind is really useful when you're in a blended family. But sometimes, like in that family, uh, your family will make decisions that you might not like. Which is, and keeping an open mind is really important. And just knowing that you support your parents will be really assuring for them. And it's just a good thing to have. Yes. My second point is definitely to your friends around you. You know, just like not to rely on them, but definitely, you know, your friends are very useful in that situation. Just ask them for help if you need, especially your church community. That would be a really good thing to go on to. Son, thank you so much. You have been absolutely amazing. You are a blessing to us. You have so much ahead of you, and we're always so proud of you. And thank, thank you for that. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that with Gideon, and he left us with some really interesting thoughts. And what one in particular is the role of the parents in just helping navigate this well, especially when it comes to our relationships with, you know, the stepdad or the biological dad or biological mom. Um, also, he spoke about how Edwin, who is his stepdad, if you like, was didn't make him feel guilty about spending time with the other one. And so there's a lot we can actually do to help this process. So Gideon has also left us or left you children with some advice if that's useful to you. Keeping an open mind because remember your parents are also navigating. Um, so some grace would be wonderful and also having a good support network. And again to parents, if you can influence that in any way, if you can get your child into a we what we do is we have a very strong church community. So we always want them to know that there's people that they can speak to because if we don't do that they will go and look other places and maybe get advice that's not necessarily helpful or that would build them so thank you again son i will see you soon but thank you for taking time to watch please do not forget to join our pages to like to follow them in case you miss anything we've got some fun videos on the liliana pareti warid page so have a look at that but otherwise, I will see you back here at 8 p.m. next Saturday on Life with Liliana and Friends on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you. Hey, so I just wanted to let you know a little bit about the place where we shot today's uh, conversation. Now, this is Eden Restaurant, which is located in Beretta Street. And the reason why we chose to come here to have this conversation, because this is Edwin and I's first conversation um, together on the show. And so this is a really important place to us. We've come to, we've been patrons of this restaurant for many years. Um, we loved it from the first time we came. We um, know Sangeeta, who is the owner, very well now. Sometimes we take more time talanoing with uh, Sangeeta than we do actually eating. Those of patrons would know that. Um, but we have celebrated anniversaries here, um, celebrations like our children's passing of exams. Um, also birthdays. We've also had some not so um, happy times here when you know Liliana sometimes gets moody and stormed out. So this place holds so many memories and I wanted to encourage you if you haven't been here to come and try it. The food is excellent, the environment is excellent but also you may have heard some background noise and that's just because they're preparing for catering. There's a big lunch happening out there but thank you to Sangeeta and the team and to those of you watching you haven't been here come and try it enough. Life with Liliana and Friends.